So let's talk to another psychological operation to do with global climate warming change. So we've seen the maps and the weather maps and how they've changed. You know, 23 degrees used to be like just normal green. Now it's like, you know, bright red, deep red or orange almost, implying things are burning up and all, all that type of nonsense. Um, I'm not going to be a repeater station. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that because other people have been talking about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's right, obviously, and I don't think it's working particularly. Anyway, what I have noticed is, um, particularly with the BBC weather forecast, because I, I sometimes use the, the BBC weather, weather site. It gives like 14-day um, forecasts and stuff like that. And um, I just kind of look at it and just see what the, what they're predicting out of curiosity. One thing that I have noticed with those, though, is that they're massively pessimistic. So you look at the BBC weather forecast for this part of uh, Finland, where I am, Pori, and it just shows like, I don't know, something like 17 degrees and like rain constantly. Like today, it was supposed to be that. And I'm in a T-shirt now. It's like low 20s and um, bright and sunny. Anyway, the, the trick that they play is they, they give a percentage chance of rain. So uh, it might, they might only say it's like a 15% chance of rain, but that doesn't stop them from showing a rain icon on, on the headline for the weather forecast for that particular region. And also, um, it's also the duration of the rain. So you might have sun for most of the day, but maybe a shower for half an hour. And that shower for half an hour justifies the BBC showing a ra rain with two drops for that particular part of the world for that particular day, you know, when it's only for half an hour. And then it might only be a 15% chance that that rain will happen anyway. So you might think, well, what, what's the significance of this? And I think it's basically a psychological operation designed to demoralise you. So what do these globalists want? They want you to be inside on uh, interacting with the screen. What they don't want is for you to get out and about into nature. Like this morning, I, I got up early and um, cycled to the beach, went for a swim in the sea. It was absolutely fantastic. Enjoyed a few rays and then I cycled back on, cycled back home. Fantastic. Cost me... Um, um, zero pounds, zero pence, or zero cents, zero euros, whatever currency you want to use. They don't want us out and about interacting with other human beings in the flesh, face to face, and um, for that matter, interacting in nature. They don't like that. They, particularly, they don't like us being out in the sun, which tells me that we should all be out in the sun. It's probably very good for us. Um, I, I definitely have always felt this, that it's, um, it's good to um, exercise and enjoy fresh air and enjoy being part of nature. Like over here at the moment in Finland, um, there's loads of uh, wild blueberries, uh, raspberries, strawberries that you can pick, all free of charge, and they're fantastically good for you. In about another month's time, there's going to be all sorts of different types of mushrooms. I'm not, I'm talking cantarellis and uh, um, what's the other one? I um, can't remember the other type now. But um, anyway, so basically what they want is for us to stay inside and be stuck inside um, watching YouTube on, on rotation um, uh, or watching Netflix, probably even better and just being depressed, you know, inside your house. So what we must do is not use these weather forecasts to be kind of like change our plans, to look ahead and think, oh, it's gonna be rainy today, so that means that I need to cancel all of my plans and because it's, I'm gonna get wet. Another thing that they say here in Finland that they're absolutely spot on about is that there's no such thing as bad weather, there's only bad clothing, and, and that's also true as, as well. So, yeah, what I'm saying here is uh, ignore the weather propaganda that they pump out in the form of weather forecasts because they're definitely, definitely, definitely overly pessimistic. And um, that's, that's definitely true for the BBC. And as I say, what they do is that they, they do it through the probability. That's how they do it. They say, oh, well, we did predict it was rain because there was a 15% chance that it was raining, going to rain. You know, you know, for me, what 
it would make far more logic if you're going to show a, a cloud a dark cloud with raindrops on like for a particular day you would have thought well it was going to be raining for most of the day and quite a high probability that that's the chance but that's not what the BBC does and as I say what they're trying to do I believe is demoralize you and to get you to change your plans and cancel going places and meeting people and instead stay inside because you're anticipating bad weather because the BBC has told you so um, on global climate warming change, um, <laughs> that I got that from Sheep Farm, those, those, the, the, those, those boys from West Yorkshire. Um, I think it's a good one to, to throw back at, um, you know, people, should I use the word normies? Uh, what other words could I use instead of normies? Consensus huggers, that's one of my ones. You know, people who have... Uh, and a complete inability to think uh, critically and independently. Let's let's say that, um, you know, these people that they might some of them still might believe in global climate warming change. I remember once about um, when was it now? Last year it was last summer. I went to a bar and there's this this guy who owns the bar. I kind of know him. I've talked to him a few times, and I know he's a bit of an army and. Um, so it was a, it was a overcast. It wasn't particularly a great day. It wasn't raining or anything, but it was a bit cold for the summer, you know. And um, this guy, um, I, I actually bought a beer off him. I kind of started a conversation, and I said, "It's a bit cold, isn't it?" And uh, he went, "Yeah, yeah." So you, what I'm trying to get at here is is get them moaning, yeah, get them to moan about the cold weather, and then you can just fling in. Yeah, it must be the global climate warming change, you know? <laughs> and then just watch their face. So just take the mickey out of this thing. Um, you know, the earth is supposed to be boiling up. You know, make sure you say that to a normie on a day where it's, I don't know, 17 or 18 degrees in the summertime. Um, and then just watch their faces. And then the other one that I did with this guy once was um, you got talking about the weather and he was like, yeah, but there is global climate warming change. And he was just being a repeater station for all the kind of doomster stuff. And I basically said to him, well, if you go to uh, London, uh, most, and, and lots of things have, um, and you went to Charing Cross Station, you'll see there's, um, there's like a mural on one of the underground platforms of London in the medieval times where the River Thames used to routinely freeze over during the winter months. And then if you go uh, to Hampton Court um, during Henry VIII's uh, time on the throne, um, they were happily growing grapes in Hampton Court Palace. You know, um, if you go round there, they'll tell you all about it, how Henry VIII loved to uh, quaff wine that was that was produced from grapes that were grown in Hampton Court. So, you know, and, and the same would apply, of course, during Roman times, you know, there was um, there was grapes grown um, in Britain. So you then say to these kind of uh, consensus huggers, you say to them, well, it must have been because the Romans had uh, too many four by four chariots or they were taking uh, too many uh, long haul holidays um, I don't know, to a beef or something, you know, just just mock it and, and explain to them, as I did to this guy, that I used to study economics. So um, one of the first explanations of um, fluctuations in the level of economic activity, you know, like the cycle of boom and bust, was sunspots. So the output of the sun um, changes over time. Um, so when the output of the sun increased, uh, back in the days when most economic activity was agricultural, the output of the land, the productivity of land increased, and we, that was called an economic boom. And then you had other periods of time where the output of the sun uh, reduced and the productivity of land declined, and people called that a recession. So, yeah, you can explain to these people that there's plenty of historical evidence that, that the Earth's temperature has always fluctuated. And it, it was fluctuating a long time before uh, people were driving cars, had uh, central heating and, and were taking flights. So, yeah, that's 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 my message for today is um, just watch out for weather forecasts. You know, they, they a lot of it is massively pessimistic. And what they want you to do is to cancel your plans to go to go and visit places 
uh, or meet people or just get out of the house and enjoy nature because you're you know the the weather forecast of, of predicting rain or extreme thunder or whatever it is ignore it um because um they want you inside and uh, that's not good for you so get outside enjoy nature talk to people face to face that's way better than doing what i'm doing now which is talking to you on youtube so I'm going to post this up and then I'm I'm going to get on my on my bike and uh, meet meet up with uh, with my wife. Uh anyway, so um that's all I want to say today. So God bless.